Today, we're conducting a, uh, a quick talk to promote our upcoming e-learning class on leader standard work and lean leadership behaviors. Um, click to the next slide there, Kathy. All right, so before we jump into this, I just wanna talk a little bit about the Murley Group and what we do, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the class that's coming up. So we've been around since 2002. Uh, you can see here uh, the four folks at the top are, uh, are the main architects of our methods that we teach. Uh, with us today, we have Kathy Hanley. Um, and Kathy's, uh, she has deep expertise in the people side of Lean. So we all know that Lean's a, a lot more than just standing up some tools. There's a huge people component. Um, it's a socio-technical model. And that's uh, what we're here to cover today. So um, we have real world experience. All of our coaches have had p &L responsibility in the workplace using lean methodologies. So uh, all of our coaches have taken this beyond theory. You know, we've all run businesses using lean and had responsibility for the outcome of that business. So no, uh, it's not just theory. And a little bit about what we do. Um, we do coaching and consulting, we facilitate lean events, and we do training and e-learning. So coaching and consulting, we offer step-by-step -step customized approaches to complete lean transformations uh, that span the entirety of an organization. Uh, but we're also able to do individual lean events. So we do a lot of value stream mapping. We coach people through Kaizen events. Uh, we coach people through total productive maintenance events. And along with that, we do a lot of people systems work as well. And since the pandemic has really come into full swing, uh, we've really leaned into our training and e-learning segment. So e-learning, uh, we do a lot of remote um, classroom instruction. And this is a list of all the topics that we covered. Um, we cover everything from true north to standard work through people systems, which we're here to talk about today. Um, if you're curious about some of our offerings and when those classes may take place, um, jump onto our website, themurleygroup.com. You'll get a full list of these classes. And uh, along with that, you'll see the times and the dates that they're being conducted. Um, we do offer custom classes as well. So if you are with a company that can put together a, a group of folks that are interested in any of these topics, uh, we'd be happy to talk about doing a customized class just for you. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna hand this off to Kathy. Why don't you introduce yourself, Kathy? And um, then from there, we can jump into the class. All right, sounds great. Again, we're uh, happy to have all of you with us today. And uh, I wanna personally apologize if you were here the last time and the internet connection went out. Um, it was my internet connection that caused the problems. I've been putting it through some paces. Hopefully it's gonna, it, it's uh, stable uh, through this entire session. It has been uh, for the last few days. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on internet stability. Let's talk a little bit uh, about, oh, I should probably introduce myself. That's what brought Rob kicked off. And let me do that quickly. Um, I started my journey in lean in 1987 at Toyota Motor Manufacturing, Kentucky, which is in Georgetown, Kentucky. Um, and honestly, knew nothing about uh, manufacturing cars, knew nothing about the Toyota production system. Um, and I went there, quite honestly, for um, at that time for the money, uh, because Toyota was uh, uh, one of the, the highest paying um, employers in, in the area. And I also had a basic curiosity about this whole thing about Japanese businesses. I had read a lot in Time and Newsweek. Um, and the Wall Street Journal on uh, Japanese business practices. And they were uh, getting a lot of press coverage at that time about their forward thinking, 
Um, and uh, obviously for Toyota, the use of the Toyota production system. And so that sort of intrigued me. So I left my life of uh, social work and uh, cooking and went to work for Toyota. I was fortunate enough there to get to work with a few senseis who um, uh, were uh, directly from uh, Japan and um, I got to work with them and solve problems, understand the problem solving methodologies, understand the Toyota production system. Um, and over time worked my way uh, up in that organization. When I left Toyota, I was responsible for uh, North American strategic uh, planning, uh, strategic manufacturing planning, also responsible for human resources development, which includes all of the training programs and um, the performance appraisal systems and the succession planning, um, all those pieces. I left Toyota and went into the consulting world, spent a bit of time with a pretty large consulting group um, as their vice president of operations and uh, had consultants around the world. Um, that uh, I was responsible for deploying to major accounts like Ford, General Motors, Chrysler, um, Sp Smith Aerospace, several, several other large businesses. I uh, left there um, and went to work as a, a exclusive consultant to Ford, Ford Motor Company in 2006 and helped them with their turnaround. Um, that they did at, at that time, um, spent an entire that year there helping them reconnect their quality operating systems to their engineering um, and development systems. Um, then I left there and spent uh, about three years at Carpenter Technology, which is a specialty alloy manufacturing company in Reading, based in Reading, Pennsylvania. And I was their senior vice president of organizational effectiveness, which basically just means I had everything that you usually find in a chief administrative officer's area of responsibility, as well as implementation of the lean there for that corporation. I stayed there for three years, and then when I left, I uh, went to work. We went back to consulting and went to work with Joe Murley and the Murley Group, and have been doing that work for a little over 12 years now. So uh, in my time with Murley, we've had the opportunity to work in all kinds of different companies. Obviously, the traditional manufacturing type client clientele are in the stable. Uh, but additionally, we've worked in insurance lines, uh, large insurance companies, both their commercial and uh, personal lines. We've worked in state governments. We've worked in healthcare providers. Um, so a little bit of almost everything out there from manufacturing through all the service industries. So let's talk a little bit about um, the workshop that um, is going to happen on August 17th and 18th. Um, the objectives for that workshop uh, really revolve around understanding what is leader standard work and what is uh, what are also the behaviors that are required from lean leaders to be effective in their role in leading a transformation within their organization. Uh, we spend a lot of time, obviously, initially introducing the topics of leader standard work and lean leadership behavior. Then we spend um, our time really looking at the four elements of leader standard work. So those are really the venues where leader standard work is applied. 
we'll get into that in, a, in, in more detail in just a little bit. We also work on understanding what a lean thinking organization looks like and help our participants really evaluate their own culture within their organization relative to the model of what's required in a lean thinking organization so that we can do a better job laying out the transformation plan for our clients. Um, and then we, uh, in the class, really work to try to integrate everything that we've learned into, okay, so what is this lean thinking culture and what is it that we're, we're trying to accomplish? So let's talk a little bit about what is lean. So from our perspective, we talk about the first principle of lean uh, being really the reflection process that goes on on a, a, at least a daily basis, if not more frequently than that, uh, depending on the organization. And the main questions there are, how did we do yesterday? Where was the waste in what we tried to do? Or where did things go wrong? And how can we better today? So what is our countermeasure plan for this new, for this new day? Uh, keeping in mind that we are always moving towards um, the cycle of continuous improvement. We, we work with a model of the lean management system that consists of six major components. The first one being true north, your, your purpose or your vision or your values, really understanding what they are and what they state. Um, we don't, uh, we don't uh, always try to uh, uh, change whatever your, your current uh, vision, purpose, values are. Um, we find it works best if we work with what you already have in place and really try to bring true meaning to those aspirations. From that, then we move into working with our clients in standard work. So standard work uh, really is the definition of the processes, the one best way that we know today for how to, how to get the work done. So documenting that, talking with expert operators and making sure that, that we understand um, what, what gives us a successful output, whether that's in a service industry or it's in a manufacturing site. Once we've got the standard work um, defined and well in place, then we can work on the visual management system because one of the major um, principles of lean is that performance should be easily visible to all involved. And so we work to put together your uh, visual management system and begin to construct the framework from which you will, will then develop your leader standard work. In the meantime, uh, once we have standard work and visual management up, it really is time to look at the people system. So where are we in terms of the culture of the organization? Where are we in terms of conflict with a traditional business operating model to a lean management operating model? And where uh, do we anticipate we'll find um, the biggest issues in moving forward, whether that's in management style, company policies, recruitment systems, uh, performance evaluation systems. So we really spend time understanding what will cause hiccups as we move forward in this transformation. Once we understand that, then we can really build the leader standard work and set the model for how um, leaders 
uh, will go about understanding what is the current condition of operations in their organization and also um, work with leaders to coach and develop their ability to coach and develop in their work environment. So a big piece of work there. And then the next piece is accountability. So how do we set up systems that uh, allow us to hold ourselves and each other accountable for accomplishing uh, what we have stated we want to accomplish with our true north to keep standard work solidly in place to understand our current performance, to make sure that we're managing the people systems of the organization appropriately, and with leader standard work, making sure that um, we understand how the operations are actually performing on an ongoing basis. So that's the, the um, system that we work with our with our clients to put in place for a true lean transformation. So let's talk just a minute about lean continuous improvement. Most folks, uh, and I'm sure everyone on the phone today understand uh, that lean is all about the idea of continuous improvement. But for continuous improvement to, to actually happen, the first play, thing we have to accomplish is stability in the work site. And we do that, as I mentioned earlier, by really understanding what we need to, what our targets need to be in terms of safety, quality, delivery, cost, and you may have some other key performance indicators or K KPIs that you will identify that you want to shoot for. Um, the first thing we do is establish standard work. And the reason we establish standard work is to establish stability in the output of a process um, so that we know we have a predictable, stable result available to us. Once we have that standard work in place and we see stability, with the performance of the processes, then we begin the, the process of continuous improvement. Continuous improvement is a what we call a PDCA cycle, which stands for plan, do, check, and adjust. So once we understand, do we either have a problem we need to correct or we are, are we in pursuit of a higher level of performance? We go into problem solving mode, establish the next round, the next version of standard work, put that soundly in place, train up the organization, and then begin to look at the results of the output of the process. And again, determine, do we have a problem or is it time to go into continuous improvement? And so this is an ongoing site cycle until um, the business is successful in meeting its key performance indicators, um, whether that's safety, quality, delivery cost, or any other indicators that, that you may have in your organization. So we are uh, in the process of um, maintaining standard work and pursuing continuous improvement, it's not really a self-sustaining system. You can't just uh, put the standard work out there and expect that everyone's going to abide by it and it's going to stay in, in place as is. It really takes a human component of continually engaging in checking for adherence for adherence to standard work for the sufficiency of standard work. So will the standard work as it's currently defined actually get you to predictable output day in, day out? And then the identification of new problems. And so 
a great deal of interaction is required uh, in the processes of uh, the local leaders uh, within, within the organization. One of the things that really we find most often uh, uh, causes slippage in um, the uh, key performance performance of the the key indicators is really when management gets distracted, and they very often get distracted when um, other emergencies come up or they get distracted when they actually do reach a level of stability uh, and they think they don't have to pay attention anymore. And so they begin to focus on, uh, go back to focusing on uh, work that is outside of um, the operation and, uh, and maybe um, um, surrounded by, uh, critical requests for uh, new activities or new uh, perceived problem solving interventions. And so they tend to begin to fall away from, from the work site. So the leadership attention is usually the first thing that goes. And then the next thing that happens is standard work itself starts to decay. So Remember I said that standard work is the is our one best way of doing work today, but people will find ways to improve standard work um, as well as find ways to avoid um, standard work. And so without the attention of managers and leaders in the work site, standard work will very often begin to, to decay. And once that happens, uh, problem identification and problem solving stops because nobody's out there saying, what did we do yesterday? Where was the waste? And what can we do better today? And so then improvement stops and progress stops. And that's, that's the reality of what goes on in an organization. So let's talk a little bit about lean leadership behaviors um, and, and really talk about why are they necessary. When we look at the leader mindset, we very often uh, find that uh, we have bad processes that may occasionally produce good results, but quite honestly, we don't know why. Um, it may be the luck of the day. Uh, it may be the specific people on a shift, uh, but we don't always know uh, why we're getting the results that, that we're getting. Um, when we have a good process, and it's giving us expected results, then we're in the best condition. And that's where standard work and leader standard work really operate. So we want to always be uh, within a, a, a range of, of acceptable variation, achieving our expected results. And we get there by looking at the process and uh, managing the visual management of um, the results of the process. So what do we do for problem solving? Well, problem solving is really about um, understanding what's uh, actually happening versus what should be happening and really collecting the facts of the situation to really know where you are in terms of what's actually happening compared to what should be happening. So we employ a fact-based problem solving methodology that leads us to early on get a grasp of through data analysis, through 
direct observation, through experimentation, really understand where are we and what is the gap between what should be happening and what's actually happening. So how do we coach coaches to coach that problem solving methodology? We actually uh, work directly uh, in the organization, uh, working with the leader, the, the top leader of the organization and preparing them by following leader standard work and executing lean leadership behaviors to be able to effectively coach the folks that report to them down, down the line. So it really, our system is really dependent on developing the coaching skills of leaders up and down the organization. So we always say that a lean leader's job is, is primarily two functions. One is problem solving. The other one is continuous improvement. And there are, in problem solving and continuous improvements, there are three key behaviors um, that we work towards uh, coaching our clients in to be sure that the leaders in the organization are effective at initiating action, coaching the people uh, who need to do the problem solving, and then influencing across the organization to make sure that there is agreement to the actions that need to be taken and the resources that need to be utilized. Continuous improvement is really looking at reinforcing stability as talked about through standard work. And then as appropriate, initiating Kaizen or continuous improvement, and then making sure that we have, again, organizational alignment to really accomplish um, those, um, those goals. I mentioned that there are four venues for standard work, and those venues are gimbal walks or uh, direct observation walks, whatever you call them in, in your organization. Uh, that's when you actually go to the work site and see what is actually happening rather than uh, staying at your desk and waiting for a report to come to you. It's also um, the, att uh, the attending of regular reflection meetings, huddle meetings. Um, uh, they're called a lot of, of different things in different organizations, but that really, this is really where looking at the visual management system, we ask those questions of how did we do yesterday? What do we need to do today? And, um, and, and understanding what was the gap in our performance. Uh, we also um, see leader standard work and lean leadership behaviors utilized in regular one-on-ones with our uh, direct reports. And then as appropriate, we, we work with our clients to establish an and-on response. And an and-on response is an immediate response to um, problems that develop within a process so that problems can be attended to in a timely manner. And Rob, I'm thinking this is because we're about to run out of time. I'm thinking this is a good spot to stop and see if there are any questions that need to be answered. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a question here that was typed in. Um, and the question is, how do you distinguish between regular standard work and leader standard work? Is regular standard work related to best practices for operational slash business processes? Well, maybe leader standard work is more behavioral. Yeah, so the answer to that is, is uh, yes, but so yes, regular standard work is the work of uh, operations and processes that create whatever the service or product is that your customer pays for. So it is the operational process. Leader standard work is the routine of 
checking on the effectiveness of standard work, um, the effectiveness of um, key performance indicator, um, actual performance, the identification of problems and moving forward with either problem solving or continuous improvement as, as required. So leader standard work is about really um, getting engaged with those who do the work um, and understanding the actual condition uh, so that you understand whether or not you're gonna meet your key performance indicators. Um, that's the only question that we have for now. If, if uh, anybody um, would like to ask another question, feel free to either raise your hand or type something in. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Hey, Rob, have you seen uh, three just came in? Can you see them? Oh, yes, I can. Sorry, I was on the wrong tab. Okay, so uh, question number one. How do you address the issue of leader standard work becoming a checklist? Yeah, so it really can't be a checklist. Um, the leader, you know, we very often will start leaders, new leaders out on uh, what amounts to a checklist just to make sure that they actually understand the routine that they're being asked to follow. But then we work closely with our clients to coach them about the behaviors they need to be engaging in when they are performing leader standard work. So how do you go, how do you appear at the work site and in the process? What are the questions that you're asking? What are you looking for? Um, and um, really caution the client uh, against turning it into a checklist that you check off, uh, yes, I visited process five, process six, and process eight. Um, and, you know, I know what the performance numbers are. It really is about those interactions that you have with the people who actually perform the processes that are the, the critical uh, component to leader standard work. And if you are always engaged with the people, then it can't be uh, just a checklist. All right, well said. Um, another question here. Uh, what leadership behaviors should happen in a gimbal walk? So I think the first uh, most important leadership behavior that should happen um, in a gimbal walk is that being willing to uh, look and listen. So it really is about, you know, the strength of your observation and then the ability to uh, engage in humble inquiry about what is the actual condition. So instead of saying, you know, what what the heck is going on here, but rather saying, using a more humble servant approach and a more open uh, questioning approach to say, you know, can you help me understand what happens when we have that defect or what, what do you think happens when uh, a customer is dissatisfied with the service, the transaction you just provided. It really is about being open to asking the questions and really listening instead of assuming that you already know the answer. Because in that conversation is where you create both the thinking culture as well as uh, the op the opportunity to solve the problem. We have a lot of good questions here. So I've uh, got a couple more for you. Okay. Um, so problem solving and continuous improvement is mm -hmm. also related to implementing lessons learned. And continuous improvement might be continuous learning. What, do you, right. what are your comments on that? 
So continuous improvement is continuous learning. Um, and um, there really is, is no, no separating uh, the two. They, they really are uh, one in the same. Organizations um, tend to understand uh, usually the, the language of continuous improvement. Um, and that is usually more acceptable, uh, especially in a traditional operating model. To talk, it makes sense to everyone that we want to talk about uh, continuous improvement. But what we really are talking about, if we are really, really engaging in a lean thinking organization, is we are engaging in continuous learning. All right. uh, another good one here. Um, explain a little more about the one-on-one -on -one meeting. Okay, so the one-on-one -on -one meeting. So um, ideally the folks that are in your direct line of report, so it really should be, um, you know, the, the supervisor to their direct reports, and I'm using the word supervisor generically, you could be a CEO and be technically the supervisor of several senior vice presidents, or you could be a line supervisor and uh, be the supervisor of several operators. Uh, but it is the process of, of sitting down with an individual on a regular basis to really review with them how their performance is going, how the job is going for them, what problems do they see in processes, and what opportunities do they see for improvement. Um, it can also be the time where you are doing as a leader are doing coaching and developing of the individual um, to either enhance their, uh, their current performance or to build them up towards um, uh, work that you would like them to be able to perform in the future. So it's your typical one-on-one, -on -one, but the critical piece of it is it's gotta be done on an ongoing predictable basis. Awesome. Okay, here's another one here. Um, is and on response the equivalent to an urgent request? Yes. Um, since practicing lean on a daily basis, we are trying to be proactive versus firefighting. Thank you. Yes. So and on response is the is the res, is the response to an urgent request. So let me talk about that for just a second. So in, in the production system, we often see andons are uh, either visual um, or um, sound signals that uh, alert supervisors to a process or going off track or an operator being pulled out of their standard work. Um, and so those situations generally, depending on the pace of production, generally require immediate response. In a service situation or a transactional situation, we then work with clients to set up and on systems or alert systems that allow for um, operators of, of processes, transactional or service processes to um, bring problems with those processes to the urgent problems with those processes to the attention of the supervisor at a set time. So for instance, maybe my and on uh, time as the manager of a claims group in um, health insurance uh, might be every morning from 9 to 9.30. So that means my door is open and 
my claims adjusters know that they can come to me with their more urgent issues uh, between nine and 9.30, um, I'm gonna be available and I'm going to um, either, either bring the problem forward um, to whoever it needs to go, go to, or um, I'm gonna help them resolve that problem um, and we're going to we're going to start the problem solving process. Very often uh, in trans in the transactional world, it the and on process often revolves around approvals and uh, requirements, uh, either legal and or uh, contractual in nature. This uh, this next question is awesome, and it's one that. Um, we kind of see quite a bit and it's asking about starting a new organization but i would say this applies even to doing a lean transformation in an existing organization and the question is do you begin with leader standard work or with standard work or both at the same time yeah so you start you start you actually start by mapping out your value stream so that you understand what inputs are required what what processes um, those inputs need to go through to get you the outputs that are required to be successful, whatever your business defines as successful. So once the value stream map is done, then in that process, you define um, where you need standard work. So what are the major processes? What are the standard steps that get us to predictable results on an ongoing basis? And then from there, very quickly, leader standard work uh, comes online um, so that um, leaders are out in the actual work environment, which we call the Gimba. Uh, they're actually out there lending support and solving problems. So that's it for the questions, uh, with the exception of one. Um, so somebody asked if we have a sample of leader standard work to share. Um, I don't have anything handy. Do you have something handy, Kathy? If I not, don't have anything can... that I can share up on the screen right now, no. Okay, so why don't we, um, we may be able to connect one-on-one -on -one if somebody's interested in doing that. Um, I can be reached at rob.murley at themurleygroup.com which I'll type in the comments. And uh, if you are interested in taking the full length version of this class, it is coming up on the um, 17th and 18th of this month. Um, more detail can be found at our website, themurleygroup.com, or you could reach out to me as well. Um, be happy to uh, answer any questions you may have um, we are here to be your lean ally. So if you would like to set up a time to uh, talk one-on-one -on -one about your lean transformation, uh, your learning of lean, or just bounce any questions or scenarios off of us, we'd be more than happy uh, to do that. Um, I see here that uh, somebody asked a question, are you offering the two-day class again? Yes, this is a two-day class. It's two four-hour chunks. Um, on the 17th and 18th, and it goes from noon to four Eastern time. So feel free to reach out uh, to me personally or Kathy personally or hit the website. Uh, we're available. Um, Great. So yeah, thank you everybody.